Today I was feeling quite nostalgic for obvious reasons for America, because I'm a real nationalist. No. Um, a few days ago, Fabiano Caruana, your favorite player and winner of the 2014 Singfield Cup, not the 2015 one, that's for sure. Be lucky to come in fourth. What are the three players? Then he might come in fourth, okay? So if you, if, I'm sure you kids all make a lot of bets. You bet, bet on Fabiano coming in last, terrible. Anyway, he won last year, so he used to be good. And uh, he, he was the best player who played for Italy and now he plays for the US because he's American. So now the United States has three players in the top 10 in the world. Hikaru Nakamura, your favorite player. No. Fabiano Caruana, no. who's now plays for the US, and Wesley So. And they're all gonna play in the Sinkfield Cup next month, even though it's not next month, but it's next month to you. So I did good. It's in August um, and a little bit of September. And we had a lot of discussions about the Singfield Cup. I was talking to Magnus and Akaru and the people who run the chess club. And I was like, dudes, my birthday is September 6th. And they're like, all right, all right. The Singfield Cup will end September 5th. OK, so that way I get to celebrate my birthday. OK, now, uh, because I'm feeling like nostalgic for America, because Nakamura is now the second rated player in the world. He just tied for second in Norway. We got three guys in the top 10. Walter Brown, your favorite grandmaster, passed away earlier this week. He was one of the best players in the United States in the late 60s, 70s, and 80s. And he died very young at the age of 66. I just saw him last week. So I was thinking, I got to show you something really American. And what's the most American chess player ever? The only one you've heard of. Who's the only American chess player you've heard of who's not me? Say it louder, because I heard somebody say it. Bobby Fisher. Bobby Fisher, very good, good whispering. Okay, Bobby Fisher, who was also the craziest player who ever lived, and I'm, I'm talking to you, Steinitz. That's right, well, I was crazier than Steinitz, but it's close. Okay, uh, he played what was called, I put my phone down for a lot of air quotes here, the game of the century. Okay, it must have been a slow century. Okay, now this game is very suspicious because every move White made was terrible, but that helped Black win, so that was very nice of him. Now, there were two brothers who played chess last century, only two, Robert Byrne and Donald Byrne. Robert Byrne was a candidate for the world championship and a fine tennis player. He's not too good, he's all right. Donald Byrne was an international master and a get about town. And Donald Byrne was white, Bobby Fischer was black. Now what will surprise you, you ready to be surprised? Bobby Fischer was only 13 years old when this game was played. And he played several brilliant moves to win the game, including sacrificing his queen. Although he has another famous game with Robert Byrne, which is better than this game, but okay. Anyway, this is the game of the century. For those of you who have been to the chess club, I need more air quotes, and you've seen the art on the wall, I wish I could roll my eyes better, one of the art installations actually shows this game over and over and over again. Someday I'll memorize the game. Okay, so Fisher was black, Donald Byrne was white. They developed their knights. Hooray, developing knights is good. Okay, C4, and as you know, C4 is? Explosive. Right, and back up about 20 feet, thank you. Okay, now, where did black move his bishop? This one. Nowhere. Nowhere. So he was like, hey, these pawns are blocking me. So he moved one of them. You could move either one. If you move them two squares, then white's going to take it and you'll cry. So he moved it one square. He's going to put his bishop here. Now, when my mom plays chess, she likes to play this move too, but she can never remember which square to go to. And she flips a coin in her head and goes to the wrong one. Okay. You want your bishop here because that's the longest diagonal ever. And when your bishop goes here, what do we call that bishop? It has an Italian name. It's what kind of bishop? A fianchetto bishop. Okay, and that's what Fisher did, even though he was 13. He fianchettoed his bishop. Okay, and now he's ready to castle. And white played in the center. Now, black has two moves. Um, one is the Grunfeld with d5, that's the name of the opening. And one is the King's Indian with castles. 
and Fisher liked to play both of them, he castled. Now, if this game was played today, 95% of grandmasters would play in the center. But this game was played over 50 years ago, so white played here. Actually, I play that move myself sometimes. And now, even though black didn't play the Grunfeld last move, he played it this move. He put his pawn in the middle. Could have moved his pawn one square also. Okay, and white played queen b3, attacking this pawn eight million times. Oh wait, I miscounted. Eight million and four. Okay, so three of white's pieces are attacking this pawn. So black took the pawn. This move is hard to find. What did white play? Very hard to find. What do you think? Takes. Takes. He took the pawn, right? Now black's center pawn is gone, and so white's going to get a big center next move. And now c6 is a funny move, but this game was played when Fisher was 13, so give him a break. e4, knight bd7. Which side has a better center, white or black? Black. I'll give you one more guess. Black. I'll give you one more guess. White. White obviously has a better center. White has two pawns in the center. Black has nothing in the center. Two pawns in the center is better than nothing. Right, Mike Comer? Yeah. Okay, don't, don't kill the children. Not till class is over. Sunder them up in front. All right. Who gets the prize for getting teased the most? Will it be you? No. Uh, back up a lot. Yeah, ask me. Yeah, more. Much more. Okay. Now, white has a better center, but black has two advantages. Black castled and white didn't, right? And should you move your queen out in the opening or should you move your bishops and knights? Bishops, bishops and knights. But white already made two queen moves. How could he? So white did two things wrong, and he did one thing right. He put his pawns in the middle, but he moved his queen, he didn't castle. So let's see who wins because of all this. Now, he put his rook in the middle, and black made a move that every child will approve of. I don't approve of it, but all of you will. You'll be like, yeah, that's a good move. Because he was 13, so plays like you do. He played knight to b6. I wonder why he did that. To attack the queen. Do you think white's going to see his queen attacked? Obviously. Yeah. Now, black didn't play knight b6 because it attacks the queen. That just happened to be the case. Black wanted to move out his bishop, but he couldn't move his bishop because his knight was blocking him. So he moved his knight out of the way. White, being a fine player, moved his queen. And black got... So black has two advantages. Black has all of his minor pieces out, and white doesn't. And black castled, and white didn't. But white has a nice center. Okay. Now, black, white did something that makes me furious. I've never been so angry. So you better not do this. Yeah, don't, don't, don't move that. Don't do it. White should say, hey, my knight's pinned, and my bishop didn't move yet. Let's move our bishop and unpin our knight and get ready to castle. That's what I would do in a one minute game. But Donald Byrne is like, wait a minute, I already moved this bishop, let's move it again. Okay, he moved it here. Terrible, okay? Now, Fisher was like, wait a minute, you move this here, then you move this again. You didn't castle, you didn't get your bishop out, I'm gonna punish you. So he sent him to his room, and he's like, I'm an adult and you're 13. Now, Notice this knight protects this pawn because I said so. Yeah. So if black takes the pawn, white takes the knight and says, what are you doing? How, so Fisher was like, I have an idea. Let's make this knight move away. Then I'll play knight takes pawn. So what move did Fisher make to attack this knight? A very strange move. But he did attack the knight. You got to give him that. How did black attack this knight? Knight to wait, no. knight to wait, close. Knight to d5. Yeah, but then, then your knight couldn't take this pawn because you moved your knight. The other knight. Ah, the other knight to d5 where a pawn could take it. No, what a world. Yeah. Knight where? 
We're A4? A4. Knight A4 is what Fisher played. Attacking the knight and the queen. Wow, what a player. Okay, so that was the first brilliant move of the game. Now, Donald Byrne was like, hmm, if I take this knight and he takes my pawn, now his knight's forking my queen and bishop. Where can white move his queen where it still protects his bishop? Because he doesn't want to lose his queen. He doesn't want to lose his bishop. Um. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. 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 Um, queen, e5. queen e5 is very risky because of this bishop. Very risky, right? So let's not go there. Scared. There's two answers I'm thinking of, and one of them's not Arby's. Yes. The queen's c5. The queen's on c5. No, queen b5. Queen b5 is slightly risky because there's a pawn here. So the pawn would take you. Wait, yeah. The queen c1. Queen c1. Now, black has a triple fork. That's why Byrne didn't play this. Black has a move that attacks the bishop the knight, and the king. First, black has to take the bishop, white takes the knight, now we can fork this knight, this knight, and this king. At the same time. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy talk. It's so crazy she runs out of breath. She's like, oh man, that's a great move. How does black attack these three things at once? With three different pieces. Well, partial credit. How about with the queen? Queen a5 check. Attacking everything. And just in case, the bishop is attacking the rook. So white has four pieces attacked. So Burns said, I'm not doing that. I don't want four pieces attacked, baby. OK. So instead of losing all of his pieces after knight a4, Instead of playing knight takes knight, knight takes e4 and crying, he just retreated his queen. He's like, whatever. Okay, even though that wasn't really popular at that time. All right, and then after knight a th a queen a3, black took the knight. That's why he played knight a4. Okay, and then white said, I'll, I'll take that. And finally, the e4 pawn is not protected, so black took it. However, this unleashes the latent potential of the bishop. If you had more than an eighth grade education, you would understand the difference between latent potential and actualized potential. But you don't quote Emery Tate too often in the kids' class. Not too often. And not go to jail. So that was pretty good. Okay, knight takes e4. And now white's like, thank you very much. White was a very polite person. What's it called, what this bishop is doing to these guys? Fork. Fork. How come black can't just take this bishop for free? Ah, uh, the queen is protecting. The queen really far away is protecting the bishop. OK, so white's going to win some material, but white's king is still on e1. Terrible. OK, so he saved his queen. That seems like a good piece to save. And instead of taking the rook, he developed his bishop so he could castle. Check. Okay, and then Fisher said, yum, 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 yum. I'll take that. Knight takes c3. Now, most of you are confused. You're like, why doesn't he just take the knight? Now, is the queen protecting the bishop anymore? No. 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 So if I play rook to e8, pitting your bishop to your king, you're going to be very unhappy. Yeah, I know. Okay, so Byrne is like, I have an idea. I'm going to take your knight, but before I take your knight, I'm going to save my bishop, then I'll take your knight. And attack. Attack the queen. And Fisher said, check. Because it's check. Did white castle out of check? No. If it's legal, he would have done it then white would probably be winning. But it's not legal to castle when you're in check, so he just moved his king. Okay, now you're gonna see the most famous move 
possibly ever played ever. It's one of the five most famous moves in chess. Notice white is attacking the queen and white is attacking the knight. So white was pretty happy now. Okay, and this guy's like, wait a minute, I've seen this game, and he's raising his hand. You! No, I, I was trying to answer to the... Oh, whether you could cast a lot of check? That famous move. What's the famous move? Uh, queen C2. Queen C2, that used to be on my shirt. Who played Queen C2? Uh, Somebody? I forgot. Yeah, I forgot too. Okay, now, in this position... Black played the amazing retreat, bishop e6, totally ignoring his queen. And white said, oh boy, I'm going to take your queen. And he did. And then he lost all of his pieces. But he took a queen. We're going to see how in a second. So let's look at not taking the queen. Let's pretend we take the bishop. Now, is there a white bishop there anymore? No. No. So black would play check. Notice how it's check. Yes. What would white do to get out of check? Um, move back to e1. Move back to e1? Man, I don't know about that move. Then black has the advantage because the game's over, right? That's checkmate. So I'll show you a funnier checkmate. White goes here, then we check him. Then we double check him. Notice how the knight and the queen are attacking the king. If the king goes here, queen here, mate. Now you're going to see your favorite checkmate ever. After king here, black has a two-move checkmate. The first move is awesome. Do you see a two-move checkmate for black? What's the most awesome first move? Yeah. You're two thirds right. Yeah. Queen F1. Queen F1. Notice how the knight defends the queen. You agree. So the rook has to take and now checkmate. Wouldn't that have been awesome? Yeah. That's called smothered mate. Okay. Man, I can't make that joke because I actually will get fired. Yeah. All right. So, wow. If I don't make the joke, then you know, you know, should make that joke. Okay, so instead of bishop takes e6 getting checkmated, exactly, uh, Donald Byrne is like, oh boy, a free queen. Hooray for me. It's not free. That's right. So this bishop just went here, and he played bishop takes bishop check. Now, Fisher takes a piece every move. He's like, oh boy, I'm going to take a lot of pieces. Donald Byrne made the only legal move. Then he got put in check. Then he made the only legal move again. He's pretty good, right? Makes the only legal move. Is that rook on c1? Oh, it's on d1. OK. I put it back on the wrong square. Knight takes d4 check. Notice how it's check, because it's discovered check, right? Is that right? King back, check. King back. Knight c3 check. So he has check. King back. And now he played a Zwischenzug. Instead of taking this rook, he took this bishop first. And now the rook attacks the queen and the knight attacks the rook. Okay, so white's pieces are disappearing. He played queen here. And he's like, you take my rook and I'll take your bishop. That's fair. And Fisher's like, you can't have my bishop. Rook a4 defending his bishop. And the guy's like, all right, I'll take a pawn. And then Fisher's like, yum, 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 yum. Now let's do some counting. White has an extra queen. Remember White took that queen? How many extra pieces does black have? Who has more rooks? Yeah, almost a whole chess set. Black has two rooks, and white has one rook. They have the same number of knights, and black has two bishops. So black has an extra rook and two extra bishops. Now we're going to vote. Okay, you can pick one of two. 
you can pick an extra queen or you can pick a rook and two bishops. Which would you rather have? Who says a queen? Who says a rook and two bishops? Yeah, a rook and two bishops, that's a lot of pieces. A rook and two bishops, if you do silly kids math, the only math you know how to do is worth 11? And then a queen is worth nine. Eleven is more than nine, right? So a rook and two bishops is better than a queen. Coincidentally, black is also ahead of pawn. Also, that pawn's not going to live too long, is it? Also, the rook is trapped. So white's position is terrible. White's down material and his position's bad. So he, got, he lost pretty fast. Now, most grandmasters would resign. They say, I give up because you're crushing me. But because he didn't resign, we got to see a good checkmate. So it's good he didn't resign. Good for us. So he played h3 so his king could escape. His king didn't escape too good. And then black went yum, 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 yum. Took more pawns. Now he's threatening this pawn with his knight and his rook. The king escaped. And Fisher went, yum, 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 yum. Now black is up three pawns. That's a lot of pawns. And then he escaped with his rook. And Fisher took the rook. And his opponent took the rook back. That's fair, right? Yeah. Actually, he checked him first. And then he took the rook back, which doesn't make much of a difference. Now black played in the middle, eyeing this pawn over here. The knight went here, and the knight went in the center. Boy, Fisher's good at playing in the center. Knight to e4, queen to b8. Now, some of you are confused. Some of you? You were like, wait a minute. Doesn't this bishop attack the queen and the king? That looks good, right? Yeah. But it's not possible. Because the, the queen can take the bishop. No, because the queen can take the king. If queen takes the bishop, I'd be pretty happy. Yeah. So the bishop is pinned. It can't move. So Fisher's like, hey, my pawn's attacked. I'm going to save it. OK, then they block their pawns up so nobody can move their pawns. That's fair. And Fisher really wanted to play here. But the queen pins his bishop. Now the queen doesn't pin his bishop. Now the bishop's going there. Now once again. If this game was played in the last five years and two grandmasters were playing, White would have resigned a long time ago. But this game was played a long time ago and Fisher was 13 years old. His opponent wasn't a grandmaster, so they played all the way to checkmate, which is what you guys do. So Black used four pieces to checkmate White. That wasn't very nice of him. Every move was check. And black's got four pieces, so that's a lot of checking, right? Can you believe how much he's getting checked? Are you shocked? Yeah. Look at all those checks. Look at all that. Four black pieces are attacking the king. That's a lot of pieces, right? Wouldn't you be scared if you were white? Yeah. Okay, now black has two moves that are checkmate, and Fisher played one of them. Find a move for black that's checkmate. Checkmate's good because you win. Um, if you play knight e2, the king can go here because your knight's not there anymore. Then you would win in three moves instead of in one. Yeah. Bishop a3, Bishop a3 is checkmate. That's pretty checkmatey. And black played another checkmate. Black played another checkmate. Rook a1, my king can go up the board because your rook went down. Uh, but you were one third correct. One third? Yeah, you got the rook part right. Um, oh, rook, now I see two. Rook c2, almost as good as the greatest move ever, queen c2. I don't know where that came from. But. Rook c2, checkmate. Notice black has four pieces attacking white's king. White's got nothing. Black has three extra pawns too. So that game was pretty good from black, especially the move bishop to e6. That was a great move. However, 
Uh, the best part was the fact that Black was 13 years old. Usually when you're 13, you don't sacrifice your queen and beat international masters. Usually you blunder your queen and then you resign, right? And if I remember correctly, that was played in 1956, and that's correct. I didn't know it was played October 17th. You learn something new every day, right? And uh, luckily for us, uh, grandmasters who were good 100 years ago and 80 years ago, when we look at their games, we're like, wow, those grandmasters are pretty good. But nowadays, when people are grandmasters, we can go back in time and go, hey, look at that game he played when he was seven. He was terrible, right? So we look at Fisher's games when Fisher was 12, 13, 14 years old. 13. Not quite as good when he was in his 20s, but still pretty good, right? Okay, and so I have a lot of my games when I was 9, 10, 11. I'm, I, don't, I don't show you those games where I give all my pieces away. My rating's 1,400. Yeah, I don't show you those. Okay, so because we have databases and we can look at chess games, we can see how people got better as time went by. Maybe when Magnus Carlsen was seven, he didn't play very good. Now he's the best. He didn't even play chess. Maybe, but we know now because we can look at those games. Now he's rated 2950, so he plays pretty good. Just kidding, 2850. Ha, how silly can I be? Okay, so that was a great game from a great American player, and he was barely crazy at the time, but he still played pretty well, right? And the crazier he got, the better he played. I hope you've learned something today. Mm -hmm.